What do you need to know to pass the first subtest of the CSET Multiple Subjects Test? My name's Scott Rosell, and this video is gonna tell you exactly that. It's gonna tell you what you need to know to pass the English questions of the first subtest of the Multiple Subjects CSET exam. How do I know it's on the test? As the founder of 242 Turing, I've studied this test backwards and forwards, up and down, left and right, to make sure that 242 Turing offers the best study guides available. And I have found concepts or secrets about the test that I want to share with you to make your studying even easier. So watch this video, it's free, you can use it as much as you want to make sure that you can pass the test the next time you take it. So keep watching and go ahead and like the video, subscribe, leave a comment. We want to continue creating videos just like this for future teachers like you to make your life even easier. The English concepts for the multiple subjects test are really going to focus on three areas, language and linguistics, written and non-written communication, and reading comprehension. To teach English, you really need to understand the fundamental concepts of English. So the multiple subject subtest one is really gonna test you on the basic concepts of human language. Specifically, phonology, morphology, syntax, semantics, the role of pragmatics, and phonemic awareness. And one of the most important concepts of the most important concepts is phonemic awareness. Now, phonemic awareness is the ability to hear, identify, and manipulate individual sounds. A strong phonemic awareness is the most important part in communicating and in reading. You see, the phoneme is the smallest unit of sound. So for example, in the word cat, there are three distinct phonemes, the k, the a, and the t. And mastering phonemic awareness is the first step in mastering language fluency and reading fluency. After you master those more fundamental concepts, make sure you familiarize yourself with alphabetic principle, parts of speech, and basic sentence structure, specifically compound, complex, and simple. You also need to understand how a child develops their first language and how they develop their second language. Make sure you know and familiarize yourself with the observable milestones for each acquisition. And to really help with this, familiarize yourself with the major theories of language acquisition. Yes, people dedicate their lives to understanding how we learn language and they have a few theories on it, so make sure you get the big ones. Literacy development is another big aspect of language and linguistics. You need to understand the process of literacy development and how best to assess it. Become familiar with concepts like decoding, comprehension, word recognition, spelling accuracy, rate, and prosody. And the big concept to know for language and linguistics is phonemic awareness. Make sure you thoroughly understand the impact of phonemic awareness on language acquisition and literacy development. And make sure to check the description for links specifically helping with those big concepts. Writing questions will appear on the exam and they're gonna focus on two aspects of writing, strategies and applications. Writing strategies questions will cover things like the five steps of writing, which are outline, note taking, rough draft, revision, and final draft. Also, you're gonna need to know about specific writing concepts, such as principles of organization, transitions, point of view, word choice, task, purpose, and audience. Also for writing, make sure you're familiar with the four principles of composition, appropriate structure, logical development of ideas, the appropriate vocabulary, and the context of ideas. And you should also be able to recognize the different characteristics of different writing genres. Genres like argument, informative, narrative, summaries, letters, and research reports. Also, and this is a big one, you need to teach students how to make an argument and then support their argument with evidence. Now that covers concepts that you might find on the writing questions, but the non-written communication questions are gonna focus on something a little different. Non-writing questions are gonna focus on things like storytelling, narratives, persuasive pieces, research presentations, and poetry resuscitations. But even in these, the fundamental aspects of communication still hold. Non-written communication questions are gonna focus on how the speaker can communicate their ideas given the limitations or privileges of their specific genre. A big concept to know for written and non-written communication is the writing process. On your test, you will see questions relating to the writing process and how it impacts students' instruction. Reading comprehension and analysis is the last major area for the English questions on the first subtest of the multiple subjects exam. And these reading questions are really gonna focus on how you, the test taker, understand what you're reading. So these questions are gonna be much less pedagogical in nature. They're not gonna really focus on how well you can teach reading, but they're there to assess how well you can identify certain components of a reading passage. The test is gonna provide you a reading passage, and then they're gonna ask you questions like, what's the main idea of the passage? Why did the author use a particular word choice? What could another word or a synonym be for uh, maybe an uncommon word. 
and other questions relevant to the content of the reading passage. And also these questions, make sure you're familiar with the different characteristics of different reading genres. Examples of reading genres would be novels, short stories, folk tales, fairy tales, and poems. So make sure you understand how to analyze the structure and the main idea of various reading passages and are familiar with why an author uses specific words over, over other words. Now the big idea to know for the reading questions is text complexity. And text complexity really deals with how complex is a specific text and which audience or age group is it most appropriate for. Check the description for a resource dedicated just to text complexity. Now, if you have any questions about the test, leave a comment below. If you have any thoughts about the video, leave a comment below. Let us know how we're doing, what you liked, what you didn't like. It helps us keep creating videos for teachers just like you so they can pass their test and get in, into the classroom. Now, if you have any questions about what you just saw, make sure to leave a comment below. 